Oh shit, I got the fuck you so close? I don't what, are you, know. what are you so close to me for? I don't know. Welcome back to this very spooky and mysterious episode of the One and a Half White Guys podcast, or more unsolicited white guy opinions on movies for long. I'm Nathan, your half white guy. I'm Nick, your one white guy. Welcome to the podcast where we talk about comedy, movies, and mysteries. The mystery of why you're over here. Well, Nick, I, you know, it's, it's entering a very special time. 2024 is here, right? I hadn't noticed. Yeah. And we are encountering a lot of movies. A lot of movies that are entering their 20th anniversary. Jesus fucking Christ. Do you want to feel old? old? This is the time to do it. One <sighs> of those movies, we have a couple of different ones, but one of those movies is Scooby-Doo 2 Monsters Unleashed. Unleashed. Now, we so, are going to be doing that later, but we felt like if we didn't do Scooby-Doo 1. What's the point? What's the point? We both grew up on Scooby-Doo. Absolutely. Scooby-Doo, where are you specifically? Absolutely. We're, we've been big fans. We're still fans as adults. Of the do. These movies came to us at a special time in our lives when we were developing children. Before I liked girls. No. <laughs> you've never, I don't think you've ever liked girls. Damn. <laughs> oh, God. And um, Crystal's going to be shocked. It has been... <laughs> <laughs> These movies, Scooby-Doo and Scooby-Doo 2 Monsters Unleashed, have been ingrained in our pop culture for so long in, in terms of millennial nostalgia. Yeah, our again, generation, a millennial nostalgia podcast. Our generations becoming, love these movies. Uh, it's beloved. These, Every, everyone I've talked to in our generation loves this movie. And some of our good friends love this movie as well. Yeah. And we thought for this we would do our now third guest episode we've ever had. That's First correct. was Larry. Then was Vanessa mm -hmm. for Legally Blonde. And now we have a third one for Scooby-Doo. So we thought we'd ask our friend Cameron to come on down and uh, talk about his love for this movie with us because he's a big Scooby-Doo head. Cameron! Cameron! Hey. Oh, God, he's here. Okay. Yes. Cameron, welcome on in. Thank you for having me. I, I'm super excited to be here. Um, you know, Scooby-Doo, it's been a huge part of my life for pretty really? much okay. my entire life, actually. Nice. Yeah, Scooby-Doo was uh, the first thing, first piece of media I ever saw that actually scared the shit out of me. Really? Oh, yeah. okay. No, nah, we, there was, um, if you guys remember that that episode of Where Are You? Like the one in the bog, basically. The witch and the zombie. Yeah. Oh, which witch is which? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, uh, of they, course, a they, classic. They showed that in my kindergarten class, and uh, <laughs> I had to be taken out. Oh, God. <laughs> Because I was a little fucking crybaby. I was a little scared. Yeah, a little, little, little oh, crybaby. Oh, Cameron, scared of the animated 60s TV show. <laughs> I'm going to go on record right now. I'm, I'm sure you, you film kitties over there have, you know, some <laughs> some criticisms or something, whatever. <laughs> Shit. I've never um, heard that term. <laughs> but uh, straight up, I think this is a perfect movie. We are doing Scooby-Doo, released in 2002, directed by Raja Gosnell, starring Stu Mocker as Raggy. Buffy the Cold Bitch from Cool Intentions as Daphne, <laughs> Mr. Bean as Mondavarius, and all the members of Sugar Ray as themselves. Yeah. Let's, let's play a game, Cameron. Let's see. All right. Freddie Prinze Jr. as... Fred. Sarah Michelle Gellar as... Daphne. Linda Carlini as... Selma. And Matthew Lillard as... Shaggy. Do you know who did the voice of Scooby-Doo? I was just looking through the credits yesterday, because I can tell you it's not Frank Welker. It's not. Um, which is a travesty. Also, the guy who played uh, Scrappy is another voice actor who played Scooby-Doo in one of the older series. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Neil Fanning Neil, is Scooby-Doo. Neil Fanning. Okay, and it's right. Scott Innes yes. as Scrappy. Yeah. Yes. Scott Innes was Scooby in stuff like Zombie Island and Witch's Ghost. Yeah, yeah, that was it. Yep. That The the run of four movies in the early 90s that actually kick-started enough attention on Scooby-Doo mm -hmm. to get this movie greenlit and, and off the ground. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Zombie Island, the undisputed king of all Scooby-Doo movies. <laughs> all animated <laughs> Scooby-Doo movies. No argument, <laughs> okay. honestly. Yeah, no argument. Nick, all right. would you like to lead us in with the IMDb summary that I might have fucked up on the actual uh, Google sheet or of course. Google Doc? Okay. <laughs> Biochemist Michael Morbius. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> After an acrimonious breakup, the Mystery Inc. gang are individually brought to an island resort to investigate strange goings on. Why did you want to do this most with us? Scooby Doo's the, the shit, man. Why would I not want to do this one? All right. Fair yeah. enough. We love it. Good, good, good. Next love question. <laughs> okay. This is a good lead into past experiences. When did you first see this? What was that like? When it came out, I know I saw it multiple times in theaters. Uh, by More the than time, once. Yeah, by the time this movie came out, I was already fully in on Scooby-Doo. I'd already seen a ton of the Where Are You series. 
already a ton of the pup series uh, from from the eighties that nobody seems to remember fondly except for me. <laughs> um, I, I like it. I, like I it. remember when it was on. I've seen a. I had seen a little bit of it. <laughs> I remember it exists. It did exist. That's true. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. So I was already fully, you know, in on the Scooby Doo stuff before this movie came out. So I remember being absolutely stoked to see it in theaters, and it it did not disappoint. Did okay. not disappoint. And I've okay. seen it. Okay. In. Basically, ever I've seen this movie at least like 15, 20 times. Honestly, I, I've seen it way more than I probably it deserves to be seen. <laughs> but uh, you know what? I love it. It's one of my comfort movies. Hey, uh, that's I've, good to know. I've come nice. back to it at basically every phase of my life. I remember when I was a senior in high school, I literally spent Halloween watching it with a couple friends because uh, we had nothing hell better to yeah. do. Like, yeah, it's it's uh, it is a comfort movie for me, and it, I plan on it continuing to be a comfort movie for me. It's, it's funny how you say that. It's like, oh, yeah, after senior year, I spent that for Halloween. But, like, that's the shit I did this Halloween. So, <laughs> it's like, maybe we all enter, you know, different times of our life. We all come back to Scooby-Doo. I mean, I spent this last Halloween season literally watching, like, every single Scooby-Doo movie that Hell has yeah. existed. Um, except for, like, a select few, like... The WWE collab that happened a few years ago. We gotta, <laughs> we, gotta get, we gotta get on that. Yeah, I I I actually hear it's not bad. I heard it's not bad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I think I must have seen it after on like a DVD or something because oh, I, I grew up with the I grew up with the Where Are You? I grew up with the original, but I, I don't remember why I didn't see it. It's 2002, so I would have been like seven. America's still recovering from September 11, 2001, <laughs> and the true. thing that they figured might do might do some good for people was an animated dog. There were things I liked about it, but it was 50-50. And it wasn't until I I maybe was growing up in like seventh and eighth grade where I saw it again on like where Cartoon Network would play it all the time. I remember yep. that. And yep. I watched it finally, like all the way through. And I thought, you know, remembered it. And I said, there's a lot of cool things in here, but there's a lot of things I just do not like or don't get. <laughs> but <laughs> What's as, not as, to like, as, man? as time has gone on, I'm going to get stabbed halfway through this episode. <laughs> uh, Nick, Nick is going to be able to escape. As I've gotten older, I realize there's a lot of charm to it. And for that, I for that, I have a special place in my heart for it as well. Good to know, because I'm going to get stabbed first. Oh, OK, <laughs> this I remember the marketing for this movie being insane. This yeah. was all over like you know, all the kids channels oh, and everything yeah. like that. This was like a proper, like kind of blockbuster for the time, wasn't it? Yes. Like, pretty big budget, yeah. like big high profile. Mm -hmm. You know, Nobody had ever seen a talking dog before. So they, <laughs> <laughs> so they were super fucking excited. This had so much hype behind it. The though. fact that it was a full fledged live action movie, That's, like yeah, a, like a, fair point. like a big blockbuster, you know, you took those more seriously as a kid, I guess. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I was excited for this. I went with my dad. I, I grew up on Scooby-Doo, Where Are You? I was a big fan of Scooby-Doo. I loved the dog. I loved him. And uh, had a lot of Scooby-Doo merch and toys and enjoyed the mysteries, enjoyed the show. And this movie was the first time I experienced disappointment in a film as a child. No. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, man. I didn't get this fucking movie. As a kid, I just couldn't get behind it. it I was so <laughs> confused. Little kid me was so confused about what was going on. This doesn't feel like Scooby-Doo. I couldn't describe the feeling of confusion as a kid, but all I knew is that I just didn't like it. And it, it, it disappointed me so much. Oh, it can feel like a parody of Scooby-Doo in some ways. That's the best way I describe I also had a similar feeling with it. I was like, it feels like they're doing Scooby-Doo to an extreme. Does that make sense? Okay, so yeah. And, yeah. and look, I'm... As yeah. much as I think this is a perfect movie, I'm yeah. not going to sit here and say it has no flaws. I have I think a red it, dot on my forehead. <laughs> <laughs> You're dead. I, I, think, I think it is a perfect encapsulation of the, the time, you know, 2002. Oh, no doubt. No doubt about that. No you know, doubt about through, that at all. Through the lens of a, a you know, a character or a, a, a piece of media that has existed for even then for the past 40 years, right? Yeah. So yeah. I, I'm not going to sit here and say it's like, there are no flaws, but I do think it's a perfect movie in that even the flaws make it better, almost. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Just hear me out, though. You can disagree with me if you want. This movie's dripping with cynicism and self-awareness. And to a seven-year-old kid who thought he'd see Scooby-Doo <laughs> and not a satirical Kevin Williamson-esque jab at the cartoon, <laughs> it all went over my head, dude, and just confused me. I, I just remember feeling like this isn't what I expected or wanted. And I don't understand why it's like this and what exactly it's doing. I just, I, I really remember feeling let down by it. 
You know, you you say all this, and I I honestly don't necessarily disagree with what you're saying, and and I can I can sympathize with seven year old you being being like, what what do you mean? I'm not just getting a live action version of Where Are You, right? Yeah, I just, it's it's different. It's very very different. I can sympathize, but you're a little bitch anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you little seven year old. You, you might be wrong, <laughs> but you know I can I can understand it. I can sympathize. It's um, yeah. Listen, like you don't I know said. what the fuck you're talking about, okay? I got thrown out of a class when I was a kindergartner because I was scared <laughs> about an episode. All right, what do you know? What do you know? I was five. <laughs> I don't even necessarily think I had very different perspective, you know, thoughts coming out of the movie than you. It's it's obviously it is in a lot of ways it's a satire of what the original series and and straight kind of up. Went absolutely for. I yeah. agree with you, but I don't think a live action version would work any other way. But it did when they made two. <laughs> so you're wrong. <laughs> but Fair the first enough. one, I get what they were I, I, watching it again. And as, as an adult, I mean, I even found some enjoyment out of it. Like growing up after I saw it in theaters, like when they would pick it at my daycare or something, I'd be like, okay, this has watchability to it. It really does. But I'm just not as into this as others are. Is this the same day, Carrie, you would watch like the first two thirds of the Grinch or whatever? At? Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, the first two thirds, like you don't even get the lesson at well, the end? Well, we'd never, fin we'd never <laughs> finish we it. We never got to finish it. Because <laughs> our parents would come pick us up. Uh. So, <laughs> watching it again for this, the last time I had seen it was with you in college. Because yeah. one day we just woke up and well, you were starting it downstairs. You're like, hey, you want to watch it with me? <laughs> well, because if you remember, do you remember how we started talking a little more in depth about movies because of Guar? Yes. Do you remember that we were assigned to like... Hi, Jekaitis. Jason Jekaitis, <laughs> our teacher. It was like, learn something about the person sitting behind you and go learn. And you talked about... <laughs> he taught you to like learn, talk about a bad moment in your life. He talked about how he was disappointed by Scooby-Doo. And I talked about how a family <laughs> member got sick with cancer. <laughs> And he goes, and I go, this, and these, I the, mean, come on, man. Two that's... berries, one or the other. And then Nick was supposed to give a, pre I give a presentation about how Nick didn't like Scooby Doo. And Nick goes, uh, mine's a little more serious. Uh, he, <laughs> Nick, Nathan talked to me about this. And I was like, and I go, and J Jason, little did you know, those two people will grow up, live together, and then go on to start a fucking podcast together. <laughs> Lord, what happened? <laughs> The fate, the, the best <laughs> thing. What happened. But I remember you disliking that. So when we lived together, I was like, "Well, I want to watch it again" because I was like, "I kind of forgot about this for a bit." So I said, "Let's do Scooby Doo, man, the original one," because we were already starting to watch the Scooby Doo episodes together. Oh yeah, the, we the, bonded the, over the what's our new Scooby. No, love what's new Scooby Doo? The original, the show. original Scooby Doo. Where are you? Because I was like, I love the old shitty animation. I love the stories. And I love those weird interim songs that they have that are like 60s soft rock. Oh, yeah. <laughs> ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. Yeah, but like, yesterday <laughs> I got to thinking that those, those type of like, what is they're all running? And it's like, you can see they're all kind of like dancing to the song, even though they're not supposed to hear it. Do it doing the whole door thing. Yeah. Or, <laughs> <laughs> which, don't get me wrong, if if I ever could in real life, I would try to do somehow. I don't know how that ha would work. I don't know how that works in real life, but I, that's my ultimate life goal is to be able to do to, the, to the door have, montage to, you know, Just have a door hallway in my home. Like, essentially, <laughs> like, I, like you're like, where is, where, oh, hey, you think you're sleeping over. Your bedroom's on the right. <laughs> this is just the other side of the hallway. How are you doing this? Crazy, isn't it? <laughs> This cost two million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> we had to bend space and time yeah, for this, this hallway. Was hard. But you know what? Fuck it. Worth every single I'm penny. In so much debt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Cameron. That's just my thoughts on the movie. It, uh, initially, initially, it's okay. It's okay. Watching it now, I can forgive you. Watching it now, I had a lot of fun watching this again. But all I, I can remember is being a kid and just thinking, I don't get it. No, honestly, I, I think, don't get it. I think this movie plays better for adults than it does Absolutely. for kids. Absolutely. 110%. Yes. yes. And again, I'm sure we'll get into this later, but you guys know, you know, the original script for this movie was legitimately R-rated. Yes. Mm -hmm. It was it was initially conceived as a parody of Scooby-Doo yep. for adults. And I think enough of that version of the script got into the final product that it, it works a little bit more if you're able to understand all those jokes than if you're a seven-year-old Nick in the theater being like, I just want a live action version of Where Are You? Which is understandable at the end of the day. Honestly, I'm not I'm yeah. not, not going to judge you for that. And you know, it's kind of interesting that you say that because Scooby-Doo itself is a parody. It is based on something else. I'm trying to remember what it is, but there's an a, a original cartoon from Hanna-Barbera that happened about five to seven years earlier that had some similarities to Scooby-Doo. It is a parody 
of the series, the music driven comedy show, the Archie show after they suggested that there should be a musical group that appears on the show, but then that musical group goes around and solves mysteries. And that was the initial idea. It was a rock band this, that was supposed to solve mysteries. Wait, th this came out of the Archie show? Yeah, part what of the, the Archie show. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what it was. Okay, I that, remember reading this a little bit ago. Oh, so shit, it itself okay. is like a parody taken to an extreme. No, fair enough. That's actually, that is some new Scooby-Doo knowledge for copy me. Copy of I, a I copy of a that. copy. But yeah. you know what? Sometimes those copies hit, bro. <laughs> Every once in a while, you know, the, the copy gets distorted enough that it gets good again yes mm -hmm. yeah exactly i will say this this game this movie moves fast they're they're there they break up they're back together two minutes later so much <laughs> happens so much happens before the five minute mark in this movie <laughs> <laughs> it's insane that, I, w I had to keep pausing to write notes down <laughs> yeah that that opening sequence is very uh very condensed the movie starts out you know we get a the tail end of a mystery right we, yes. we got to start out with something big bombastic very 2002 right yes so we get this big long sequence that honestly in a lot of ways kind of belongs at in the last five minutes of you know not necessarily like a where are you but the, the series that would come out after this, uh, the What's New Scooby-Doo, like I could, sure. I could easily see this sequence coming, truncated version, being the last five minutes. Well, because they got a, some a, celebrity a, cameos in it, so. Uh, exactly. <laughs> no, before we even get to the celebrity cameos, though, there there is so much going on in this intro sequence. It is ridiculous. Where are they? Some sort of factory. It's a toy, I don't it's even a remember. Toy it's a toy, it's a toy, toy factory. Okay. Yes, uh, right, of course. It's a toy factory. The main thing that I was stuck on in the intro is the fact that they left in from the R-rated script Daphne just getting sexually assaulted. By I was ghost. literally about we were to gonna say. get to that. <laughs> So, That's what I'm about to say. We're let's, in the let's, let's, of, let's, <laughs> let's just paint the picture for everyone here a little bit. So they're, the gang is at the Luna Toy Factory trying to solve a mystery of the Luna Ghost, who's this jester-looking ghost that's he flying looks like around. A, he looks like a Mardi Gras. Flying around. And, yeah. <laughs> and as you say, they're in the tail end of a mystery. The trap is set, and they're trying to catch the ghost. And, da and Daphne, Danger Pro Daphne, is getting... Carried just and hauled off, groped. <laughs> no, by just, this. just and possibly getting groped, groped incessantly. And I think it's like literally the first line of the movie Guys, is her saying, "Hey, I'm getting, getting groped. Hands, <laughs> this ghost is getting handsy." Yeah. She says, "Like I'm totally getting a wedgie right I'm now. I'm totally getting yeah. a wedgie." Oh something. no, full on. He, she's no. She straight up says, "Oh, he's touching my." Uh, yeah. And then they they stop her before she says ass. Yeah. Oh but my full God. on, it's because the only reason they cut they cut that line is because when, as she's saying that, he goes and. Fucking grabs her ass. Yeah. <laughs> you can see her reaction to it. She's like, "What? Yeah. The? <laughs> it's so bad." So, so, I so immediately, that, I was like, oh, <laughs> immediately, this movie opens up with sexual assault. Yeah, in, a, we, in we, a PG Scooby Doo movie. I know. Uh, who do we get to see first? I think it's um, we see Fred. I think it's Fred, right? Fred. Yeah, we see Fred. He's Fred checking and Velma, himself out. I think. Yes, and yeah. Velma. Fred just Velma. constantly checking himself out this entire movie. Their costumes are perfect, yeah. though. They really uh, are. Well, like, they much, look just like the characters. No, yes. Yeah, I agree. As much as we say, this movie is perfectly casted. Oh, oh no, no I, I, I don't think anyone can dispute that. No, even more so than just the aesthetics of everything, the fact that every one of the main five has some sort of like actual bona fide horror credentials by the time this movie comes out. Like I said, Kevin Williamson. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's Sarah Michelle Gellar, it's Freddie Prince, Matthew Lillard. Yeah. They fucking go to an island, you know? I know, I still know what you did last summer, yeah. you know? <laughs> exactly, yeah. And I mean, I, I looked this up at one point because I was curious, and even even Linda Cardellini, Velma, um, it's not as big, it's not like a I know what you did last summer or anything, or a scream, but she was actually in a couple of horror movies before this movie came out. So every mm -hmm. single one of the big five were in, were like bonafide, you know, experienced horror actors before yeah. coming in. Linda Cardellini might have gone straight from Freaks and Geeks to this movie. Okay. She almost dies <laughs> yes. after Fred just like blasts her with a fucking high pressure fire hose and she falls <laughs> nearly to her death, even though her, her leg gets wrapped around a chain and just like, Stops her fall, but I'm just like that would like Gwen Stacy the fuck out of her. Oh, yeah, she's dead. <laughs> like, if she's not dead, her leg is like broken or gone. Like. No, she's fine. She's just dangling there, just like Fred. <laughs> Fred is. Fred gets a net thrown on him that he was supposed to watch, but it's, it's only the, because it's the classic. They they fumble the trap. They yeah. fumble the trap. And this is this is the first indication that we get to this movie being a real life cartoon. Throughout the entire rest of the movie, there are so so many moments that it's like that was the goal from the get-go was yeah. like, let's let's take all of the logic, all of the the physics, all whatever from the cartoon and just 
put him in a real life movie. Logic, yeah. especially because that thing, that ghost looks fake as shit. Oh yeah. And I'm just oh, like, it would have yeah. been, it kind of would have been fun if they made it CGI. So in their eyes, it really does kind of look like a monster. I mean, sure. But considering how the rest of the CGI in this movie looks, I don't know. That's fair. <laughs> That's fair. And I might be called a hypocrite for what I say later, but we do see Scooby and he looks the best out of everything. Scooby in this movie. and Easily. Shaggy, they yeah. come on at almost same time. They are doing what? They're hiding. In what? <laughs> oh, of course. A barrel. A yeah. barrel. <laughs> and the ghost breathes fire at them. <laughs> and then somehow they find a skateboard yeah. and there's this whole And sequence. then we play Tony Hawk Pro Skater. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <It's> so <laughs> we get to meet the whole gang. We got to meet Scooby, who are, it still doesn't look good for CGI, but still probably looks the best. And Shaggy, <laughs> played by millennial love interest Matthew Lillard as well. Oh, he and holds just up. Just take a sec, just take a second to just say Matthew Lillard is like beloved by millennials. Like oh, everyone absolutely. loves Matthew Lillard. Like, 100%. Whether yeah. it's from Scream or SLC Punk or this, especially or this. Hackers. 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 Like, like, he's he's got such a such a resume when it comes to those those late 90s early 2Ks cultural, you know, bed of millennial nostalgia and millennial absolutely. culture like it's it's so impressive how much he was able to worm his way into that ended up being so big among people our age. Yeah. The the only person in the world who who lives and breathes Shaggy oh, the, the right he's way. So like good. I he gives the you know, he says the famous line because the ghost is attacking the ghost is trying to light them on fire yes. at this point. And <laughs> yeah, this ghost is not fucking around. And Scooby Doo he looks adorable. I'm sorry. I think they I think he does look really good. No, okay. Whether so, you know the CGI is very dated he looks fine. There, he there looks are, very accurate, there in are, my opinion. There are moments in this movie, and I was I was just watching this last night, and I there were a, a few moments where I'm like, shit, this looks genuinely way better than it should for 2002. For 2002, yeah. But then 80% of the other time, Scooby's easily the best looking thing in the movie, CGI-wise, but even mm. Scooby, 60-70% of the time is like, yeah, this is a little rough. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's until, not yeah. a dog. Yeah, but not until you get to the villain reveal at the end of what he turns into. <laughs> yeah, true, true. <laughs> but um, already the CGI Mutt and Matthew Lillard are the best thing in this movie. Yeah, they really are. Their chemistry, their comedy, the throwbacks to the original. They're great. And the movies, what, what little heart the movie has mostly comes from them. Yeah, in my opinion, pretty much don't their no relationship disagreement. and yeah. their relationship. I mean, I every time the whole time they were doing shtick in this opening scene, I had a smile on my face. I was like, they're so fun together. Yeah. And it's yes. so and he's so believable when he's acting opposite nothing. They inadvertently, you know, catch the ghost by like swinging into him. <laughs> Dude, knock which, him you know, classic of, Scooby Doo. Knock into a know. bunch of Barbies while he's holding Daphne still. Yeah, and Daphne's head comes up and it's right on her Scooby's ass, and she's <laughs> like, "Oh, <"Ugh." Yeah. laughs> god damn it!" <laughs> and then Pam Anderson shows Come up, breaking in with the mystery machine. <laughs> <Hold> on, and <laughs> yeah, smashes through so, the door. This the, is so chaotic. The, no, this is the most 2002 thing I can think of, where they're like, "All right, the scene's over. Let's let's make sure that the audience knows that the the Mystery Inc. gang is like a famous." group right now they have Fuck quite it. the let's, let's bring pam anderson in and immediately just a giant crowd of fan of adoring fans and spectators into this fucking toy factory mm -hmm. through a broken brick wall yeah were they were, were they all outside too. were they all outside they're just like, waiting go go scooby gang go. <laughs> <laughs> i straight up i straight up rewound the movie thinking like oh there's got to be a point where like fred presses a button that sends a signal to pamela anderson to bust through the <laughs> no. wall or some shit no they're just magically no you know, now, now's the time to make an entrance. Fuck this factory that Pamela Anderson somehow owns. She owns the toy but then factory. She, she's the one fucking up her own factory more than that by ghost ever did. The by mystery <laughs> machine through it. The mystery machine looks good. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it does. It looks really good. I love watching Sarah Michelle Geller and Freddie Prince Jr. scenes because knowing that, oh, they're together at this. Yeah. And they would right. eventually get married. They, yeah. This was the movie that they got together with uh, in what during the production of, right? I think so. I think by the second movie, they were married. Their chemistry is interesting in this one, and that kind of leads to what happens later. The, the, the band breaks up because they all fucking hate each other. Yes, <laughs> yeah. because because <laughs> what is what happens? Fred takes the credit for Velma's uh, plan again. Teamwork. I do a tremendous amount of teamwork. <laughs> but then also let's not let's not forget our second our second adult joke of the time. Who's the who's the Luna ghost that they unmask? The creepy janitor, and he goes. How could you, Pamela? <laughs> How could you? Because he's mad that Pamela won't take him out for, uh, won't go out with him on a date. Guy, you don't need to dress up as a ghost and fly around. You could just like stalk her. 
Velma's like, you took credit for my trap again or plan again, Fred. And he's like, oh, come on, Velma, the girl. Like, who's this or something? And then Shaggy gives an inspirational speech saying they all belong on a fucked up ice cream sundae. Yeah, yep. but Daphne also just has reservations because she's like, oh, I'm just the damsel in distress. You guys all, you know, make fun of me. Yeah. For that. Which, let's let's be honest. That's a personal problem. That's like, like, that, that like that she doesn't thing. deserve to to be taking that out on the rest of the gang when <laughs> when she's the one who's fucking helpless. To Daphne be is, I'm sorry, she's a huge bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Cameron's, first Cameron's, half, fuck, Cameron's fucking first, heated about this <laughs> for the like, first half of the movie. Me, that is your problem. Okay, <laughs> no, that's not my problem. Vel- Velma's issue, I fucking legitimate man. She's <laughs> pissed off at Fred being an ego maniacal, fucking crazy motherfucker. Like I get that. Fred's yeah. a fucking it's douchebag in this movie. Why Velma harbored ill will? But uh, as again, as a kid, this confused and saddened me <laughs> so like, much. What do you mean so they're not this so much group. in the theater when they all just quit on the spot and they just they, they clearly really just hate each other and i'm just like why are they all such bitches to a each other solid, like, this is- a solid five minutes in pretty much yeah. less than less than five minutes oh yeah no almost. opening sequence it, like i said so much happens in this opening sequence it yeah. lasts like f- straight up five minutes and we get all of this at the beginning yeah it's it's incredible and then all of a sudden you know it it, te- it ends they all quit valma quits first and then daphne's like no screw you i wanted to be the one to quit first you Th- can thankfully I'm, they all go- drove there they have rides <laughs> if you notice yeah somehow they all drove there individually so yeah. they, they don't have to have shaggy give them all a ride which I mean, I thought they all drove together in the mystery machine. It was one of the signs to show that they were growing apart. Yeah. <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. All, this is like, I'll drive myself there. Yep. And um, then and Fred then, quits and they all go to separate and Shaggy and Scooby are just like, but why? Like, they're actually sad. They're like, but our friends, you're our friends. What? Well, more importantly than that, they were crashing at Fred's place, but he's like, they're like, oh, school, we're homeless. <laughs> we gotta I start think, living, we gotta start well, living they, in the van, well, man. Well, dude, I think they are, because like two years goes by, past the Dutchie starts playing, and the, it just That's looks right, like... That's right, Gen Z. It yeah. started in Scooby-Doo, not, <laughs> not Stranger Things. That's right. It just looks like Shaggy and Scooby are just, you know, traveling vagabonds living out of the van. Well, yeah, no, okay, so let's rewind a bit, because, because... Everyone quits. The, the scene ends. We get a nice little fade to black. And then immediately in like the first 10 seconds of this next scene, we get like 15 weed jokes all at the same oh, time. Yes. All at the Im- immediate same exact time. We They're get hippies. past the duchy. We get the smoke coming out of the mystery machine. And then the first two lines that Shaggy says, if you erase the food from the image in front of you when they actually cut to the inside it's of the van. About burning it, they're, right? they're literally just smoking weed. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> that, that, it, it, is, it is a perfect encapsulation of a couple of fucking stoners just hotboxing their van on the beach in like, at like Venice Beach or where, wherever the hell they are. My man. <laughs> they even say materialism isn't their bag. They're fucking hippies. Yeah, exactly. Like, they don't that, want yeah. the money. The one thing that wins them over, because there's a guy that comes knocking on the van. He's just like, the owner of this island, he wants you to come help solve a mystery. Yeah. And yep. they're like, we're not detectives anymore. I was like, when were you ever? But um, <laughs> Because no, yeah. it's also spooky. They call it Spooky Island, and they're like, That's immediately not, a turn we're off. Not, we're not going oh, We don't spooky. go anywhere with spooky, scary, haunted, or all whatever expenses the fuck in the name. Absolutely not. All expenses paid for, and all you can eat, and that wins them over. <laughs> Room and because too, they got yeah. the munchies at the moment. <laughs> and then we're immediately in at, an airport. Yep. All of them were invited. Velma and Fred run into each other first, and then they hear Daphne, who's at the gate being like, check my luggage yeah. onto Spooky Airlines, please. And immediately Fred is like, oh shit, it's Daphne. And Velma's like, crap. Just immediately, oh, she's damn just it. pissed. It's the fucking ginger. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Scooby, yeah, Shaggy shows up. He's more than happy to see all of them. He's like, we're all going to Spooky Island. Scooby shows up. He's dressed in he's drag. Dressed in drag. <laughs> Say oh, hello to Grandma. Did you guys notice that they animated pantyhose on him? Yes, I did notice yes. that. Oh, that was, really? Yes. <laughs> First, Simple Plan starts playing. It was and Simple Plan, and we'll talk about this in the facts section, would link themselves intertwined with Scooby-Doo from here on out. Forever. They are forever... If Scooby Doo dies, I guarantee all the members. If they ever stop making new, <laughs> they're Scooby-Doo's, just going to commit. All, no, 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 all, <laughs> no, no, no. I think it's a thing where all of the members of Simple Plan just die. Like that's it. Like they they just keel over. It's just an automatic. They thing. just if they all ever collapse. stop making Scooby Doo media. They're just done. Like it's the end of it. They yep. have a full tiki bar in this plane too. They, they, got they have amazing. a walk up bar in the plane in the middle of the air. Like no no fucking seatbelt lights or nothing. Like nope. fuck it, dude. We're in, we're on a party plane. Post nine eleven. <laughs> <laughs> I always forgot 
Ilsa Fisher is in this. Yeah, yes. Playing and a guy she goes, Mary Jane. Uh, she goes by Mary Jane. Mary which Jane. By his, by his own admission, is Shaggy's favorite like, name. Like, that is my favorite name. Like, he tells Scooby <laughs> to take a hike so he can... So yeah, he can on, he's like, Scooby, get the fuck out. I'm trying to get laid right now. Grandma <laughs> wants to go sit with Fred. And so he... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's 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 definitely the part. It's, she's eating sc- Scooby sc- snacks, sc- snacks too. Sc- with everything, yeah, she's eating the dog treats. Isla Fisher is normally a redhead too, and Sarah Michelle Gellar is normally a blonde, which is really funny that yeah. they just like swap <laughs> hairstyles for this movie. They get to Spooky Island, and it's goth Disneyland kind of. Yeah, <laughs> basically, yeah, it's spooky. It's spooky Disneyland. <laughs> I'd go here. This this place seems kind of cool. It's uh, like a bunch of like a lot of college kids and just like party people. Our host and owner of Spooky Island, Mr. Bean. He's not doing Mr. Bean. He's doing like Hugh Grant. Yeah. And it kind of like when he's, when he's awkward yeah, British that's comedy a good way humor. To play, yeah. Um, and he's the owner of the island. He runs it. He has brought them all here. They're like, dude, we broke up. And he's a, like, something's to the happening guests. to the guests that come here. Notice who's leaving and who's coming in. And he's like, what do the people departing look like? It's like, they look like sober, well-behaved college kids. And he's like, yeah, that's the fucking problem. That's the problem. (laughs) Those aren't the people I like. And Those so, are the people that came here. Yeah, and so that's not my target demographic. He sees he sees the girl. She's like, it's a guy comes over and said, notices her, and she he goes, she goes, are you tricking on me? <laughs> and he picks her. Yeah, he, he he's just she, like Karen. Come on, it's me. We've known each other for years. She picks him up and throws him about Which, thirty feet. <laughs> you know, he goes, you see this? The people I love. They're in danger. And I was like, so you're not gonna shut down the park? <laughs> and, I, and that's why I thought I was like. This is Jurassic Park. No, it's, it's just straight up Jurassic Park. I do love this whole initial like first night there. They're getting some backstory. They go to the castle and then there's the initial attack with an amazing needle drop, by the way. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> they're all starting to investigate. on. They're their own. all starting to investigate yeah. on their own. They're like, I'm going to solve this before you and whatnot. We meet this guy named Tuana and he's the bald guy who talks like this. And he's given like the backstory of the island. And I went years Thinking, you know, it was Arnold Vosloo from The Mummy. <laughs> but it's, oh, shit. But it's not. It's actually, actually yeah, not. Yeah, that looks hella like him, doesn't it? It's this actor named uh, Stephen Greaves. Stephen Grives. And he's oh, really wow. good. And um, he's got like a luchador henchman with him. <laughs> I would love to go to a theme park like this where you, you land at some remote location. And then the first night you're there, you have to go through some sort of intro that like acclimates you to the vibe of the park and everything. I actually yeah. legitimately thought that would be kind of cool. You're talking about to. fire festival. <laughs> <laughs> the island was home to these creatures that got royally pissed when they built a theme park there. <laughs> Again, I just want to hypothetically say, what if this is uh, in, in the context? I know it can't be the same island. They built Jurassic Park. It's like they build this fucking park with these dinosaurs that fails. They tear it down. You'd think that'd be enough for people to be like, no, don't do it. But then they build a fucking just regular theme park on it. <laughs> They built six flags on this bitch. <laughs> no wonder we're angry. It's land. They have to make money on it somehow. Money. Money. The production design is great. This I oh, like oh, yeah. great. Like the 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 resort looks fantastic. Yeah. You, so so can, much of the set design is mm-hmm. so good. And I mean, considering all the all the fucking bullshit CG backgrounds we get nowadays, like it's mm-hmm. it's really nice to go back and watch something that's like, yeah, no, they built Pract- all practical, of this. Practical, yeah. They built you know, all of these sets. Like, I don't yeah. think there was a, I don't think there's a single sequence that is actually any sort of green screen aside from, you know, obviously the characters. There's one and it's when they go up to the spooky castle and Daphne's like, what'd you do for a Scooby snack? Behind her, you can see the park. Ah, uh, okay. That's clearly green screen, but it still looks pretty fine. Yeah. Because you don't really even see the park. They do make use of like the abandoned ride that they go into in that castle. Yeah. <laughs> Daphne's investigating and she comes across a cabin on the beach where our favorite our favorite man from oh, Return of yeah. the Living Dead. Spider, Spider from Return of the Living Miguel Dead. Miguel Nunez. Miguel is, Nunez Jr. Jr. is in this. Is a and voodoo had, ritual man. And it's so fun knowing who he is now because yeah. I remembered him from the movie when uh, I was a kid. But then I watch it now and I go, oh, that's him. Dude, um, I, I love that guy. Here I wish he was in more of this. He's really funny in yes. this. He is great. Because yeah. Daphne seeks up on him. He's about to like, he's doing a voodoo ritual. <laughs> With, yeah, the, she with just, an already dead he chicken. He just lays into her, too. He's just like, <laughs> the hell's wrong with you? Can't you see I was about to sacrifice this chicken? Why are you all up in the voodoo ritual space? <laughs> yeah. What the fuck are you wearing pink for? It's a fall, that's a fall color. It's, it's the middle a middle of May. fall color. <laughs> He's just laying into her. It's yeah. great. 
what does he say? It's like now bring now, now get your tan to like like aerobic ass body out of here or something like that. Little booty out of here. <laughs> Just spends a minute reading her not, filth and then kicks her yeah, the fuck out. Do He's not like, <laughs> go up to the abandoned mansion up there. Do not go there. Is he what does he tell her. her. He does straight up tell her like for her own protection. He's like you just get out of here. Go home. Don't try to figure out what's going on here. Do not go up there. And he, she goes, I'm going to go up there. And he goes, you aren't listening at all. This is where a lot of the self awareness starts yeah. to shine through because oh, he's yeah. just like. Oh, you want me to go up to that castle? You if would you- want me because I want to do it because you think that I think that I don't know what I'm doing. And it's this long thing. He goes, what you talking about? He goes, do not go up to the castle. Well, no, I'm going to twist this fucking eight ways to heaven. And no, fuck you. I'm going to the castle. Well, I got to get off this island. Too many white people on this fucking island. <laughs> and Scooby falls for this hilarious joke. This is something out of the cartoon where he's just like, he gets a call and he's just like, come. At a bar. At, at a, a bar. bar. I got a Mr. Do here. Melvin Do. No, Melvin Scooby. Do. <laughs> what do you mean Melvin Do? And then the voice on the phone is just the, the most intentionally creepy thing in the world. Like, I got a yeah, bag of hamburgers I for you. And this is where I started getting a little freaked out as a kid because the first time you see those monsters, it's a little shocking because the, the thing sneaks up on him they, and you don't you don't see it coming. It's just kind of out of nowhere. This, no, the, it is. This giant mutant anthropomorphic rabbit looking thing. <laughs> That's what the creatures look like. They are kind of creepy looking. And this scene is when those creatures look the best in the whole movie. In the dark. In because the dark. They're in the because dark. it's in the dark in the forest and everything. They have so many ways to be able to hide the shitty CG. But these, these creatures in any other lighting in any other scene just look awful. One shows up to, you know, to kidnap Scooby. But again, like, when I first saw this, I was like, what the fuck is that thing? Like, I, <laughs> he just comes out of nowhere and he looks... I equated it to the first time you see the gremlins in the kitchen in gremlins. Yeah. It is initially shocking. This time, the monsters are real. <laughs> but then it gets all cartoony really quick. Like, you know, the, oh, yeah. Scooby inadvertently catapults them <laughs> into... No wonder they hate this fucking theme park. He gets catapulted into a ride. <laughs> <laughs> they look pretty monstrous. Like, I can understand why kids would have been intimidated by this. But As a kid... Do- in 2002, when mm-hmm. when this is like the best the CG can get, like, yeah, 100%. I, I believe it. I was definitely like, yeah, I wasn't. I It's not like I wasn't in the same boat as a kid. That particular scene I remember in the theater is definitely like getting that chills. Gave, gave me yeah. some anxiety. They're these giant slender demon mammals and they look like something out of like has been hotel. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they uh, but they start acting silly and you know, they're, cartoonish too, they're eventually. Very, very cartoonish, yeah. They do, but uh, th- that first scene of him sneaking up on Scooby, it's creepy looking. That thing is creepy looking. Yeah, that's the one time they can get away with it, but it's good that they did that in the first introduction scene for them because mm-hmm. there's at least that little foundation of, okay, these things can be a little bit creepy. These things are dangerous. Yeah, they yeah. lean into the cartoon aspect of it later, but, you know, at least this first introduction to them, there there's at least some sort of menacing, threatening aura to them, right? Yes, I guess that's why the ghost at the beginning is such a costume is so we can, you know, identify these things are more threatening and visceral. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah, the Luna point. ghost, as fake as it looked, was fake for a reason. Scooby runs back to Shaggy. He's like, there's a monster in there. Like, Scoob, you're seeing shit, you know? <laughs> I'm trying to get some here. Then let's head to the spooky castle because Daphne bribes Shaggy and Scooby to go with her. It's just like, I thought you were a strong, independent woman, Daphne. What the fuck you need these stoners for? <laughs> That's where we get the classic, you know, would you do it for a Scooby snack? They, which they had to include multiple times. Yes. Yeah. But everybody went to this castle. Fred and Velma are already there. Yeah, just investigating. Just miraculously, too. how they found out about this castle, who fucking knows? Uh, they also got uh, fucking chewed out by Mikhail <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Jr. <junior's laughs> there's, there's a deleted scene yeah. that literally you see Daphne walk out, and then from the other side, you see <laughs> Velma walk in and be like, hey, what's going on here? And then she leaves, and God then Fred's right can, behind can her. Can I sacrifice this chicken? I can't <laughs> sacrifice this chicken with your metrosexual looking ass, Fred Jones. Get rid of your fucking ascot. <laughs> You don't go to that spooky castle. You don't go to that spooky castle. (laughs) The spooky island castle is a former ride. The bad guys have turned into one of their lairs. Their headquarters or something. To to essentially, if we're going to the spoilers, to train the demons possessing the people how to act like people. (laughs) Which is admittedly really funny when they show (laughs) the training video. (laughs) In my personal life at work, like I actually do make a lot of training videos. It's a lot of what I do at my job. Yeah. And this is the, I hold this up as one of the golden, golden examples of what a perfectly self-aware and awful training video actually looks like because it it is, there are so many levels of fucking perfection to it. It's amazing. Scooby discovered that behind the ride is like a classroom with a training video on how to behave human. 
here's the do's and don'ts of you humanity know, interacting <laughs> with young people. And the first one's so great because the dude bumps into a guy at like a kickback or something. He's like, hey, sorry about that, man. I, I will you. crush your bones into dust. And everybody at the party. <laughs> Which, oh. to be honest, I also would agree with because if you heard what that guy was playing on that little piano, I would have also <laughs> been like, I'm going to fuck somebody up, dude. <laughs> but they basically are teaching the demons like just this very forced like white person lingo. It's just like, oh, faux shizzle. Oh, yes, I like to keep up on the lingo of the kids. That's literally what he says in response to, to whatever the fuck the, the, the alien possessed guy says. And true I, dat. Yeah, true dat. True Word. dat. Word. I like to keep up on my, all my lingo, bro. Are you tricking on me? <laughs> Are you tricking on me? <laughs> they almost die so many times when this ride gets turned on. Oh, yeah. No, the, so the ride gets turned on before they find yeah. the, um, the, mm -hmm. the training center. But this part was creepy to me, too, because Shaggy and Scooby get all strung up what by, like, living food. What the part of the <laughs> ride is that? It get you against the wall. Where these held baby up by xenomorphs are, like, are, like, fucking, are, like, trying to eat at you. <laughs> you are part, there's a feast, and you are part of the feast. Yeah. Yeah, like, like what what Daphne and Velma uh, get into, and and uh, and Fred, like what all three of them get into, is like, yeah, no, that's a that's a reasonable part of a normal ride. Shaggy and Scooby, like, that's no part of any fucking ride no! anywhere. <laughs> like, that's just full on assaults. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder this got shut down. Yeah. Yeah. But Daphne finds this little mini pyramid trinket that looks like something out of a uh, Hellraiser sequel. <laughs> and uh, no, what are you talking about? This is the Millennium Puzzle. <laughs> <laughs> this movie has ADHD editing because she oh, yeah. almost gets captured while taking this clue and it smash cuts to Shaggy and Scooby having a burping and farting competition. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that, that if you really want to lean into the child aspect of it all, that that that's like the most kid version. Those were the after oh, yeah. notes. Are you challenging me? <laughs> Cuz you're watching it as an adult and you're like this scene is taking a while. Like this Burt fart competition is taking yeah, a long time. They stay time. on that for a hot minute. Way too long. The gang's starting to bond a little bit again. They go back to, they escape this uh, ride. They go back to the hotel and they're trying to, you know, they're like, okay, Investigate. I'll get down to this. You get down to this. We'll get down to this. They're working. They're working a little better together now. But <laughs> Mr. Mondavarius comes up. And he's like, don't good news. I hope. And Fred goes, Listen, it's like, don't good news. Mr. Mononucleosis. <laughs> That's the joke. Three suspects. There's, the guy with the luchadore. Yeah, there's, there's not, not Arnold Vosloo. <laughs> there's the voodoo guy who's Miguel Nunez Jr. And, and you. you. Don't take it personally. You just creep me out. You just creep me out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't take it personally. I just, I, it's a personal insult that I, yes. I'm suspecting you. Yes. Just don't, don't worry about it. Yes. Don't we, think about it too hard. Velma starts investigating the, um, <laughs> the Hellraiser box. We flashback. get a flashback. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. She's telling this guy that she just met about yeah, this is where our favorite um, little little mini dog gets introduced. Speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> the most hated character in all of Scooby Doo besides Flim Flam. Besides Flim Flam. I don't know. What about Scooby Dumb? Oh yeah, Scooby Dumb. I forgot about <laughs> Scooby Dumb. <laughs> In, the, in this flashback scene, uh, we meet Mr. Scrappy Doo. Scrappy Doo. Who, who no, I, I'm power. assuming no one knew was going to be in this movie when they went no. into it. I hope nobody knew. I, I hope don't that think that you, was just a wonderful knew. surprise. Because uh, I didn't know. I was, I was surprised as a kid, too. I was just like, oh, he's in this. <laughs> yeah, wonderful, aggravating surprise to anybody watching this movie. is just like, oh, fuck. Couldn't fucking be Scrappy Doo. He couldn't be more annoying. Tell the gang is just so over his shit. Because oh, he yeah. just comes on scene and he's just saying... Oh, oh, let me at him. You know, he's saying all his one-liners from the show, essentially. Oh, yeah. Uh, they, they just no, condense scare me. all of the most annoying parts of Scrappy's character into this one scene, uh, one flashback that Velma's saying. Including some more assault on Daphne. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because what does he do, Cameron? Oh, he pisses right on her. Yeah. Not even giving a fuck. Fred's like, hey, stop pissing on Daphne. And he's like, oh, I don't know. It was an accident. Uh, you were marking your territory. <laughs> <laughs> Admit it. Objectify Daphne. <laughs> the funny thing about Scrappy Doo is actually, uh, my understanding is uh, before this movie, he did not have the same, you know, universally hated reputation that, that he did after. Oh. Is that right? Okay, I thought he did. And that's why they did this to him in the so, movie. <laughs> so no, no, actually, I and and stop me if if we're gonna be going over this later, Nathan. But um, James Gunn, the 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 original author of the script, I don't I don't remember if he's you know the only person credited mm -hmm. for for screenplay here. Yeah. But I know he wrote the original version of the script. Yeah. And 
he has gone on record saying like, no, that's just a personal vendetta that I had against Scrappy Doo. Like I fucking hate that little dog. <laughs> I and so I, wa funny. I wanted to make him like the most annoying character I possibly could. Oh my God. And that catalyzed the, the stereotype, the archetype of Scrappy being like the most annoying member of the gang. Yeah. Flashback ends with Scrappy saying, you chumps, I want to run this show or I'm leaving. And then they just leave him on the side they of the road in the, in the desert, in the desert, desert yeah. Yeah. with his little mini suitcase of all of his. Uh, I'm as cute as a Powerpuff girl. Yeah, I'll all, get my own TV show. <laughs> <laughs> all of his collars, I assume, because he's not wearing any other clothes. Like, I don't yeah. know what the fuck else he could bring in his little mini suitcase that matches his size. Uh, his sex toys. Oh my god. <laughs> so that flashback is there for a reason. This is where oh, this it really little, starts jumping the shark. This is where, this bit, where it yeah. starts getting a little intense for kids because Scooby freaks out. He thinks he sees one of the monsters outside. He's like, Fred, there's a monster. Fred's just like, Scooby, there's no such thing as, and then one the thing just busts in. <laughs> More start jumping in and start like grabbing people and burping on them, knocking them out. <laughs> I feel like there's definitely been multiple sequences in the series, in any of the series, where there's at least one yeah. bit where somebody burps and then the, the other person passes out. I was appalled watching them drag their limp bodies away. <laughs> I was like, oh, Jesus, this is dark. But it leads to a funny chase and a yeah. fantastic needle, needle drop of Man with the Hex by you the Atomic Fireball. Man. What, yes. man? Get a man with the power. <laughs> what, power? They really want Scooby. For some reason, um, we, we don't know at this point. We don't why, know why. why they want Scooby, but they, they are very interested in Scooby. But they're just uh, rounding people up and they're attacking all these people. All these people are freaking out. They have no idea what's going on. This is the sequence where, you know, any like seven year old movie goer, or anybody who's pretty sensitive, it, it's still going to be in it. They're going to be, you know, a little bit scared, whatever. But the adults watching this is where they jump the shark and it's like, all right, let's fucking have fun with this. Yeah. Let's make it ridiculous. Yep. Let's make it as cartoony as we can. Let's turn it into like, a just, monster movie. Let's now. Yeah. A fun ass monster movie. And, and I think for the, basically for the rest of the movie, the, the whole thing is just tongue in cheek. You know, let, let's take this crazy idea as far as we possibly can and, you know, lean into it as much as possible. Where can we go? How'd you get all the way oh over there? Oh my God, and we moved. Wasn't that crazy? What? Hey, Our clothes are different. Too. I know. Oh. Wasn't it great talking about Scooby Doo with Cameron? Yeah, thank you guys for checking out part one. We hope you check out part two and be sure to check us out on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts from. Thank you.